happy days. Oh, happy nights. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> Glory to God. How's everybody tonight? Blessed and highly flavored, favored, anointed, appointed, and ready to roar. Woohoo! God is good. All the time. Yes, he is. Second Timothy chapter three. Glory. Second Timothy chapter three. Thank you, Master. Oh, it's a powerful scripture. Not that we've never read it before. Amen. Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter three, verse one. Let's speak it. But know this, that in the last days, are we in the last days? Listen, we're in the last minutes. Perilous times will come. Perilous times, what are perilous times? Dangerous, hazardous, risky, unsafe. We are in these perilous times right now. You don't know what's going to happen next. Amen? Amen? But thank God you can trust in God all the way. But perilous times are unpredictable. We see that in some of our own families. <laughs> They're in perilous times, man. You know, <laughs> Perilous times. It says here, why will there be perilous times? Because men will be lovers of themselves. That's why perilous times will be. That's why things are hazardous, dangerous, unsafe. Because man's life will be more important than anything else. That's why we just did a teaching called the what? Shovel in the what? Sword. Because people aren't willing to bury themselves. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, Unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control or control over self. Brutal despisers of good. Traitors. Headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. It sounds like every Democrat. Having a form of godliness, that's every liberal. But denying its power. Ooh. And from such people, turn away. Don't argue with them. Just mention Jesus and walk away. You'll see them manifest. They'll melt right there. Hallelujah. Verse 8. Now as Janus and Jabris resisted Moses, so did these also resist the what? They resist the what? The truth. See, he's telling us, this is why perilous times are manifesting. Because of these individuals that have been taken captive in a trance, controlled by demonic spirits, they don't even realize it. The presence of God is not with them. The presence of evil is. It says here that they, these also resist the truth, men of corrupt minds, disapprove concerning the faith. But they will progress no further, for their folly will be man manifest to all, as theirs also was. Again, last days. We are here. We're, we're in perilous, day, perilous times, aren't we? It's a period of time rooted by fear. Is that happening? Amen? It's to promote corruption and a destructive agenda. Is that happening? We are in perilous times. Again, but you and I got to be more awake, more sensitive, more discerning. Why? Because you don't know what's getting ready to happen. Amen? 
You can get sideswiped. You don't know what somebody, somebody might know that you might be stalked. You don't even, I mean, you're stalked by demons. Hello? Everybody's stalked by demons. I want you to know that. Well, I'm not stalked by demons. Well, then you have them. They're already living in you. Hallelujah. Many individuals are taken captive. They're blinded. They're veiled. They're under the trance or curse. And they're used as puppets to fulfill their demonic agenda. It's evil. It's wicked. Hmm. Again, the, and, and many people are in the state of this trance. They're knowing or they're unknowing being used by the enemy. Hatred is at its high level. It's all over. Why? Because these are perilous times. And because we're in perilous times, we must be ready. We must be ready with the shield of faith. We must be ready with the sword of the Spirit. And you must activate your shovel. Make sure you're dead. Amen? Because if you're dead, nothing can hurt you. First Timothy chapter four. So we see here that these individuals, which are influenced, cursed under a trance, are manifesting the satanic agenda. Amen. And it's causing what? perilous times. Amen? In verse 1, 1 Timothy 4, verse 1, let's speak it. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, now listen, these latter times are known as perilous times. Okay? It just doesn't mean later. It means perilous times. Some will depart from the faith. And we see that already. There's pastors walking away. There's all kinds of people walking away. Giving heed to deceiving spirits. Well, listen, and doctrines of demons. These individuals that we just saw, that we just read about, amen? Man, you can turn on the news, you see them all over the place. You go by anywhere, there's a sign that says Biden, they're manifesting all over it. I'm telling you. So as you lift up Trump, they turn into blowfishes. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a what? Hot iron. In other words, they are not able to receive conviction. So don't waste your time. Pray for them. Amen? Pray for them. Forbidding to marry and condemning to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who... Believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and by what? By prayer. If you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words of faith and of good doctrine, which you have carefully followed. But reject what? Profane and old wives' fables. Exercise yourself toward what? Godliness. For bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of life that now is and that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. For to this end we both what? Labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those who believe. These things command and do what? Teach. Teach deceiving spirits, doctrines of demonic spirits. Again, schools are no longer actually teaching. They're indoctrinating. Amen. That's why you got all these kids out there that are Antifa and so forth. They're still living at home in basements with mom and dad. Somehow they got weapons. You take them away, they cry. They don't realize about prison. 
They get arrested. Believe me, they're, they, they cry. They're in distress. Because many of them don't know anything about prison. They think just because their governors, I mean, or their mayors and, and so forth are proving what they're doing, that they're protected. Even though they're getting bailed out, eventually they're going to go to prison. And many of them eventually are going to get killed somewhere or another. But again, it's because the education system is no longer teaching, it's indoctrinating. And you've got professors that are communists, that are anti-Christ. And these moron leaders of these colleges and so forth that have infiltrated to take position, to put these people in position to indoctrinate humanity and people in the United States. And one of the problems is that because the church has been too asleep. The church has been too asleep. It's not preached enough. It's not exposed enough. There's too much, oh, Jesus loves and let's take your money. Hello? It's too much, well, well I, I don't want to offend anyone. We might lose someone. Praise God. If I'm the only one standing. Who cares? If you're the only one standing, who cares? Does everybody get it? It's all that matters is your relationship with the Lord. That's it. You know, I put a thing in Facebook today. I know some of you might have said it, saw it. Warning again. Nobody escapes. Nobody escapes. There's no room in heaven for anyone that promotes and votes for innocent bloodshed of the unborn and for sexual perversion. Nobody escapes that. God looks at that person with blood all over their hands. Innocent blood. And I mentioned that in the Facebook today. No one escapes. And I ended it with said, no one. So people may think they're getting away with it, but they're not. Nobody escapes. Amen. You know, I had to go to DMV today and uh, get some stuff done or whatever for a vehicle. And so I went in there without a mask. Place almost fell apart. <laughs> then the officer came up with a gun. I figured I better obey him. He came up to me and says, you know, it's, it's a law. I said, yeah, well, the governor says it's done with. He says, but we got to obey the local people for this place. He says, I don't want to wear it either. I said, well, I'm sorry for you. So I had it on my chin, you know. He says, you know. <laughs> he says, man, you got to at least put it up there. So I put it on my mouth. I said, you know, you breathe this stuff in long enough, your own carbon dioxide, you're going to get sick. And he looked at me like, you know, I haven't thought about that. See, people don't even, they don't, everybody in there had a mask on. Some of them had gloves. Rubber suits. No, they didn't have that. <laughs> Boots. <laughs> Darth Vader uniforms. You know? I mean, it's ridiculous. And they still got the things taped off. They got seats taped off. Hey, listen, if everybody else is wearing a mask, why do I need to? That's the way I look at it. You know? Go ahead, wear the mask. Hallelujah. But again, we're seeing all of this doctrines of demons in the sports system. They're coming against the flag of freedom. You know, I never understood why they never imprisoned people for destroying the flag. Even when I was young, of course, it was somebody destroyed the flag. They were shunned, you know. You didn't see people dancing on the flag. Somebody would have kicked their butt out there. Now people hand them a match. They hand them a lighter. There is no respect for the freedom here. You know, the way I look at it, if you don't like this country, get the heck out. Go over and see what it's like. Where there isn't freedom. See, because they're abusing their liberty. They're abusing it. And the end result is going to be destructive. But again, this is why we are in perilous times because freedom is being abused and for me and you we can't abuse our liberty in christ see 
they're abusing it just to be free. Amen? To live in a country that's free, even though they're bound, they're not free. They're spiritually bound, spiritually blinded, spiritually controlled and manipulated. So they're really not free, even though they think they're free because they can throw a rock through a, a window or whatever or rebel at anything they want. But most of them are being paid for it because it's the only job they got. So we see it not only in the schools. We see it in the social media. We see it in the sports. We see it in movies. We see it in flesh book. Hello. You see how many places they're censoring now, right? I mean, they're really exposing themselves in a tremendous way. Twitter, Facebook, all of Google. Well, I told you Google's already demonic. They can't even speak the right word, Google. I mean, so, I, but, you know, you can go to other places now. There's other places called BitChute and so forth. And what's the other one? Cloud. 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 So you can go to other places besides YouTube now because YouTube is corrupt big time. But anyways, we're seeing this big battle, this, this tremendous spiritual battle that's manifesting because it's perilous times. But again, if people weren't cooperating with the powers of darkness, it wouldn't be bad. Amen? But again, the problem was prior to all of this, the body of Christ was stinking lazy, compromised. They were fearful, not that some of them still are, and they didn't stand up for what's right. Do you know that we didn't have one Republican, not one Republican, to attempt to become a sheriff? That ticks me off. What's the matter with this Republican Party? They ticked me off a while ago. That's why I became independent. I'm dependent on him. They ticked me off a long time ago. Why? Because they don't do what's right. Until they're about to lose their position. Hello? Then they finally come together and do what's right. But not one Republican voted for a sheriff. And what happened to me today was because of the law of the sheriff. Or I wouldn't have had to wear a mask in DMV. Because he's a Democrat. And so is his wife, who's a congresswoman. Nobody. Can you imagine that? All of these officers, all of these people in the, in the law enforcement, none of them stood up to go and take on this sheriff. You know what? They would have won. It just it frustrated me. I, could, I couldn't believe it. So there, I, even on the, on the sheet, there's, there's no competition. Who do you want to vote for? Well, you can't vote for nobody. He's the only moron. Second Timothy chapter 1. Nobody gets away with it, though, no matter what. Heck, I wanted to run for sheriff after I heard that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> yeah, I guess that is kind of funny, isn't it? <laughs> Praise God. I'd be a dangerous sheriff. <laughs> Call me gun smoke. <laughs> Oh, some of you don't remember that one. Um, where did I say to go? Second, Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. Let's speak it together. The hardworking farmer. Is everybody there? Am I in the wrong one? Second to, oh, I'm in chapter 1. Sorry. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the what? Laying out of my hands. For God has not given us a what? Spirit of fear, but of power, sound, of love, and of what? Sound mind. So you see what fear does? It nullifies power, nullifies love, and it nullifies a sound mind. And that's why these people are taken. So here, the body of Christ, that's how the enemy is attacking the body of Christ, because the human world is already bound by fear. 
The body of Christ is not supposed to be bound by fear. So what the enemy does is he attacks the body to put them into a place of fear where there's no sound mind. So they're not thinking straight. Amen? The love is compromised. And there's no power to overcome. And the whole thing is about themselves. Themselves. Verse 8, therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of his prisoner, nor me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed to you keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. Again, fear, if you remember, fear is a protector of pride. Pride is a protector of self. Amen? And, and in this we see fear nullifies sound mind and and, 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 and begins to sear the conscience. When people are bound by fear long enough, their heart becomes hardened. And they also fall into a place of oppression. And when that begins to happen, they can't hear God. A person may fall from a place of hot to lukewarm and then too cold. Then they become veiled. They can't see things through. They can't hear things through. And they begin to look for something else for fulfillment. Is everybody okay? Amen? You know, these people fall into a lost state of being, living under, living outside of salvation's truth, L-O-S-T. They're no longer bound to the truth. They're no longer lovers of the truth. They're lovers of themselves. Amen? And Matthew 24 Hallelujah. Jesus warned us about these things in these times of perilous times. In verse 3. Now as Jesus said on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him and privately saying, Tell us when these things will be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one does what? Deceive you. And that's where we see great deception. There's a, a great delusion going on also. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation that's ethnic, and kingdom against kingdom. We're seeing a lot of prejudice being manifested. It has, when it was nullified for such a long time. Now it's escalating because it's being promoted by those who are prejudiced. Its influence is rooted by satanic move. For nation will rise against the nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places, and they are increasing. All these things are the beginning of sorrows, and we're almost at the end of this now. And they will attempt to deliver you up to tribulation. They'll deliver you up there and try attempt to kill you. And you will be hated by nations, all nations, for my name's sake. So we see that hatred will increase, won't it? And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. 
This is called perilous times. And many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Why? Because they're going to promote it. The things that they will say will promote it. Try to turn it into a way where it seems like it's from God to act this way. Or it's okay. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow what? Cold. But he who endures to the end which shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. So you got to look at something very powerful. The purpose is to get the gospel preached in every area of the globe so that the, we can get out of here. Amen? Once everyone has an opportunity to hear the gospel, whether they accept it or, re, or refuse it, once it's been released in that area, it's done. And again, right now, the gospel is almost preached all over the world. I was at an event one time, and they were um, asking for donations, which we donated. Uh, the ministry gave a, an offering. And they had uh, radios, like, that they were parachuting out of uh, airplanes. And they were going in all remote places. And whatever the language was of that country and whatever remote place it was, whether it was a tribe or whatever, when it landed there, it would speak in their language the gospel and salvation. And so these, this organization was sending them out all over the world. I thought it was so phenomenal. Uh, again, because that's the process. I, you know, trying to get the gospel. Give an opportunity of salvation to everyone through the world. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. So in this, we see something very powerful that's beginning to happen. Hallelujah. Uh, in Ezekiel 38. Ezekiel 38. Something has to happen for us to be able to access some of these places. Ezekiel 38. And verse 1, is everybody there? Anybody there? Okay, cool. Hallelujah. So what's the end result as to what? Reach the gospel. Get the gospel preached in every area. Doesn't matter whether it's a Muslim area or doesn't matter. And Ezekiel 38 and verse 1, it says, Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog in the land of Magog. The prince of Rosh, Makesh, and Tabal, and prophesy against him. And say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O God, prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tabal. I will turn you around, put hooks in your jaws, and lead you out with all of your army, horses, and horsemen, all splendidly clothed. A great company with bucklers and shields, all of them. Handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia, Libya are with them. All of them with shield and helmet. So you got to understand that these, these nations are going to attack Israel. Gomer and all its troops, the house of Tamalkar, from the far north and all its troops, many people are with you. Prepare yourself and be ready, you and all of your companies that gather about you, and be a guard for them. After many days, you'll be visited. In the latter years, you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword. Now, brought back from the sword, that means Jews that were brought back from the Holocaust. The sword is representation of the Holocaust. And gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate. They were brought out of the nations, and now all of them dwell safely. You will ascend, coming like a storm, covering the land like a cloud, you and all of your troops, many peoples with you. 
Thus says the Lord God, on that day it shall come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind and you will make an evil plan. You will say, I will go up against the land on unwalled villages. I will go to a peaceful people who dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls, having neither bars nor gates, to take plunder and to take booty, to stretch out your hand against the waste places that are again inhabited, and against a people gathered from the nations who have acquired livestock goods, who dwell in the midst of the land. Shabad, Dandad, the merchants of Tarshish, and all their young lions will say to you, have you come to take plunder? Have you gathered your army to take booty, to carry away silver and gold, to take away livestock and goods, to take great plunder? Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say to God, thus says the Lord God, on the day when my people Israel dwell safely, you will not know it. And you will come from your place out of the far north, you and many peoples with you, all of them riding on horses, a great company and mighty army. You will come up against my people Israel like a cloud to cover the land. It will be in the latter days that I will bring you against my land so that the nations may know me when I am howled in you, O Gog, before their eyes. In other words, the Lord's going to destroy them. Does everybody understand? The reason why I I'm, I'm brought this up is because we are now, these are, some of these places that they're talking about is Saudi Arabia, Turk, uh, Turkish areas, more of the Europe area. In other words, they are all considering right now, Sudan just signed a peace treaty with Israel. Jordan is talking about it. All of Israel's enemies are beginning to come along, even Palestine. We are in such a time, okay, it's, it's, it's chaotic, amen? It's perilous times, but their hearts are being turned. Their hearts are being turned to bring peace. Why do we need peace with them? So the gospel can go. So the gospel can get in every area. This is how close we are. Uh, Saudi Arabia, listen, once Saudi Arabia does peace with Israel, it's over with. All of the Middle East will do it except for, you know, Tur Turkey and uh, Iran and Russia and, you know, so forth and whatever. And China, those are the ones that are going to attack Israel. Why? They're going to attack them because they're going to be low and, and um, like food. They won't have all the riches and resources. They will come, they will get lower and lower on oil. Everything is going to be depleted and they're going to want to have to attack Israel, because Israel is prospering like crazy. Now, I don't know if you remember when Don, uh, Ronald Reagan was president, and uh, he spoke about a uh, SDI system that was to shut down and, and, and uh, with lasers from satellites any nuclear missile that was going to come up. They were beginning to build that technology. Uh, but Russia came in and dismantled and pulled out of many things because they, want, they didn't want Ronald Reagan to complete it. Well, hallelujah, Israel did. So Israel has the highest technology in the world. They have places that can shoot a nuclear missile right out of space with a laser. And they are protecting themselves so who wouldn't want to make peace with Israel? You know, think about it. They get protection. But Israel has set it up so that United States and Israel are the number one nations protected. That's why things are shifting and changing right now. See, people don't under, they don't know all of this stuff. They don't get it, what's going on. There's a tremendous shift and change going on. Even though we are in perilous times. Amen? But the deep forces of darkness know this. And they're trying to do everything that they can to dismantle and prevent what, Donald, what God is using Donald Trump for. 
Amen. But think about this. This all started with one man. Does everybody get it? With one man that was willing to lay down his life, his riches, his wealth, his fame to serve God. I don't know if you saw it or not, but in one of his last rally, it was powerful. One of his last rallies. I don't think it was his last one, maybe the one before that. And they were, they were saying about a, a great man. And, and they asked him, and they were talking about the most famous. They're saying, man, you're probably the most famous person right now in the world. You know, which he is right now. But he said, no, there's one other. There's one, not me. And I'm not going to take his place. His name is Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, the whole place went nuts. He said that. And he said it multiple times. He says, I, and he looked up to heaven. He says, I, I'm, never, I'm not going to take your place. I'm not going to play that game. But who is the famous man in the world? He said, Jesus Christ. So again, that had to really blow the Democrats away. Those demons in there are probably, ah. <laughs> So again, we are seeing a tremendous, tremendous move of God. We are in perilous times, last days, last minutes. Things are about to shift. You know, we don't know exactly how many years that these treaties have been signed. or We don't know anything, but they're still not completed yet. But once all of these peace treaties are signed, the gospel, that's the first thing that's going to manifest in those places. The gospel will be preached in those places. Now, I, I want to go to uh, Ezekiel uh, 28. Ezekiel 28. Hallelujah. And verse 11. And moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take a lamentation for the king of Tyre, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, You are the seal of perfection. Well, you know he's not talking about a man. Amen. Full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden. Well, you know he's not talking about a man. <laughs> the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, the sardius, topaz, and diamond, and braille, and onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created because, who is he talking about? Lucifer. Amen. He was a praise and worship leader of the universe. You are the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You are on the holy mountain of God. At that time, the earth was known as the holy mountain of God. You walk back and forth in the midst of the fiery storms. Why? Because Lucifer was there when God created the earth. Remember, the angels were created and then matter was created. You were prepared in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your what? Trading. I want, please look at this. People are starving because of lack of trade. This is what's changing all of these places. What's causing peace? Agreements of trade. That's why God put Donald Trump in. Because he's a businessman. He's not a politician. He knows how to make a deal. And he knows what a good deal is and a bad deal. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within. And you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God. In other words, there was a position. God dismantled that power of authority in Lucifer. And I will destroy you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for, your, for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I will lay you before kings that they might gaze at you. You defiled your sanctuaries. 
by the multitude of your iniquities, and by the iniquity of your what? Trading. In other words, he was a thief. Therefore, I brought fire from your midst. It will devour you. And I turned you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who see you. All who knew you among the peoples are astonished at you. You have become a horror and shall be no more. This is prophetically what's going to happen. Amen? But again, so we got to see that it's trade, which is bringing finances. Without trade, look at what's happening to China right now. They're freaking out. So they're building more military. Their people are starving to death. And those poor people that are put in prison camps and so forth. I mean, they're so controlled. Their technology is all over. It's, it's, it's like the, if they think that you're going to do something, they arrest you. Thought crimes. It's bad. They have been the demonic. And if you go back, you'll find that in the Chinese regimes of centuries and centuries ago was a high satanic worship. I mean, we see it in Israel, but China and all those regimes, we saw it, you know, with it, how it was brought in and, and mingled in into Israel and so forth, but it was, China was the high satanic regimes where they promoted themselves as gods and goddesses, uh, sacrificing humans, thinking that they were getting favor from their gods. I mean, it was really, really bad. I, you know, if you ever get a chance, well, I don't know. Marco Polo was a, it's a, it's a flick, but it's pretty gross. Um, then anyways, you can see a lot of the reality of what went on during that period of time. Amen? Hallelujah. And turn to uh, Romans 13. So what's the end result? Getting the gospel to every nation. Rescuing as many souls as possible. In verse 11, uh, verse 10, sorry. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfillment of the law. And do this knowing the time that now is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, nor, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and in envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts and desires. And again, this is where you and I have to be careful. Amen? We, we got to be careful not with outbursts of flesh. Look, at, there's a difference between shouting and praising than screaming. Then what? Screaming. Screaming is pure flesh. You can scream to try and praise God. It's offensive to him. Screaming will have no place in here anymore. There's a difference between a shout and there's a difference between a scream. It's repulsive. It's offensive to God. There's no promotion of flesh. Amen? Amen? Flesh will have no glory. We got to be careful that we don't fall into the works of the flesh. That's just screaming this flesh. Amen? Again, there's a place of shouting and joy. But screaming is ridiculous. Hallelujah. No works of the flesh. Why? It's offensive to God. You want to quench the spirit right away? Let the outburst of flesh be, be manifested. And that's where many people are falling into. And if they can't discern that, then there's a disconnect somewhere. Amen? There's a disconnect. 
In Hebrews chapter 10. Hallelujah. Hebrew. We see enough flesh out in the body. Many people are beginning to react out there instead of respond. That's works of the flesh. Hebrews 10, 19. Is everybody there? Hebrews 10, 19. Let's speak it together. Hallelujah. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us, through the veil that is his flesh, and having the high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a what? True heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without what? Wavering or drifting, for he who promises faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day, what? Approaching. Again, forsaking the assembling. The enemy knows. And I still see many people that churches are not open yet. It baffles me. You know, people are still doing uh, what a video, whatever, or watching it on YouTube or Fleshbook or whatever. Now, they're lacking the presence of God. And that's a ploy of the enemy. Because he knows if he can get you disconnected from the presence of God, he can snag you. He can deceive you. He can put blinders on you. Hallelujah. Forsaken the assembly, the enemy knows that gathering of saints with praise and worship brings the anointing of the presence and power of God Almighty. That allows me and you to partake of the divine nature. Again, I have to go back to the divine nature. Without partaking of the divine nature, there is no sword of the Spirit manifesting in us. Amen. You cannot overcome the enemy without partaking of the divine nature which overcomes all evil influence and attacks. Many people are practicing more uh, safe distance, veiling themselves. <laughs> they practice more of the stuff of fear and, you know, veiling themselves in safe distance and getting in the presence of God. Shame on them. See, the deeper you go into the presence of the Lord, the freer you become and the more dangerous you are. To the enemy. He knows. Believe me, he knows the level of the presence of God in your life. He knows the level of the anointing in your life. Psalm 56. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Psalm 56, verse 1. Be merciful to me, O God, for man would swallow me up. Fighting all day, he oppresses me. Fighting when? All day. He oppresses me. My enemies would hound me all day, for there are many who fight against me, O Most High. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. I will, and God... I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear. 
What can flesh do to me? All day they twist my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They gather together, they hide, they mark my steps. When they lie in wait for my life, shall they escape by iniquity and anger, cast down the peoples, O oh God. <laughs> Again, your battles all day long. You see, sometimes you don't see it. But you're being attacked all day long. That's why it's important to carry the presence of God. If you're a partaker of the divine nature, nothing can penetrate that. Nothing. You're in a walking in a free. You're walking in, in a liberty. You're walking in a, a different life. Well, you're walking in a divine nature life. You're walking a holy life, a righteous life, a freedom from the world, not concerns and worries. Hey, there's things that we have to do, amen, and there's certain concerns, but they never turn into a worry or a fear. There's a difference. That's why he says in Psalm 91, you don't have to go there, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Well, we're partaking of the secret place as we gather together and worship by not forsaking to assemble. And by taking, partaking of the uh, secret place in the presence of God, we're also being able to partake in a divine nature. Amen. Again, we are in perilous times. Perilous times take serious decisions. There are some things that we're going to have to just lay down to maintain the presence of God. Amen. Some people are constantly working. Listen, money isn't going to buy your way home. Amen? His presence is the only thing that's going to help. Partaking of the divine nature. Praise God. 2 Timothy 2 and 21. We'll close in here. I got a few more scriptures, but I think we got it. 2 Timothy 2.21. Don't let anybody deceive you. <laughs> Somebody says they're okay and they don't want to partake in fellowship, they're not okay. Oh, I'm all right. No, you're not. Why? Because they're not partaking of the divine nature. 2 Timothy 2.21 Glory to God. You know, here's a question. Are you willing to submit to God, amen, yield to his promises, and covet his presence? I'm going to say that again. That's a place where you and I must get to. We must be what? Willing to submit to God, yield to his promises, and covet his presence. His presence should be more important to you than your life because his presence is your life I'll say that again are you willing to submit to God yield to his promises and covet his presence 2 Timothy 2 21 let's speak it together therefore if anyone cleanses himself from the latter from his past He'll be a vessel for honor. You know, there's a price to pay for to be a vessel of honor. Sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. It doesn't mean you have to be perfect. God is not asking what you can do for him. The only thing he wants from you is your heart. Amen? He wants your heart. People exchange their heart for works. He's not looking at what your works are. He's looking at your heart. He wants your heart. Why? Your heart is the core of what? All desire. When he has your heart, he knows that your choices and decisions and desires will be pleasing to him. They will not be offensive. Things will stay in divine order. Hallelujah. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he'll be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also useful lusts, 
but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Listen. <laughs> you know, people fall into the place, and especially emotionally, when our family members begin to pass, when our friends begin to pass, people fall into a place of emotion. I'm all alone. You're never alone. Amen? <laughs> after, I'm, after I got saved, everybody was gone. They didn't have to pass away. <laughs> they were gone. <laughs> they didn't want to stay near me. And I didn't want to associate with them. I went to go see my parents. I led them to the Lord and left. Why? Because I want to hang around. I want to be involved with those who live out of a pure heart. Whose heart the Lord has. Not heart that the devil has. <laughs> Amen. There's a difference. It says here, verse 23, but avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach and patient and humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. You know, one of the things I put in my, uh, in the message today in the Facebook was, you know, you, unless you're willing to turn away from, you will, ne you will never enter heaven. Amen? People have made mistakes. I'm going to tell you right now, I know right now that there are many people who voted for the wrong thing and are repentant. There are many all over this country. They are regretting what they've done because they're beginning to wake up. Because they got pushed by the devil. Amen? They got pushed by the devil for early voting. The devil was knocking on people's doors, promoting and pushing them to vote for what is displeasing to God, and they fell into that place. Why did they fall into that place? Because they were not assembling. The presence of God was not there. Or they would have made the right decision. Listen, if you're a partaker of the divine nature, you're going to make right decisions. Amen? And when you don't know what to do, you're going to wait. You're going to choke, react, and wait for a respond. Amen? Praise God. Listen, we are in perilous times. It's important that you be careful, be sensitive, be alert. And don't get sucked into the soulish arena. Let the bed, dead bury the dead. Amen? And keep your shovel right next to your side and the sword on the other side. <laughs> Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask you to protect this seed that you've imparted in us and bring it to remembrance so that we may be restrainers of evil, expressors of your character and releasing the truth and decree of the gospel of Jesus Christ in all places for your glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.